According to a Reuters survey following the jobs report, Wall Street's top banks are expecting the U.S. Central Bank to stay steady on interest rates at least until September. Well, one job that is proving hard to fill is that of RPA pilot. Now, an RPA, or remotely piloted aircraft, can be described as a hybrid of a drone and a fighter jet. And the U.S. Air Force has faced an RPA pilot shortage since at least 2007. Now, RPAs do not require the pilots on board, but finding the right candidates to fly them on dry land is proving tough. And our Karina Huber got a closer look. So I will uh, take you around the uh, MQ-9. Captain James showcases one of the U.S. military's top weapons in its fight against terror. We have lights just like uh, every other aircraft on the planet. So that, but in many ways, this is not like most other aircraft. The MQ-9 Reaper is the U.S. Air Force's most advanced drone or remotely piloted aircraft in use today. A sensor in the front acts as its eyes. And unlike a conventional aircraft, no one sits in it. Pilots of the MQ-9 sit in so-called ground control stations that resemble cockpits often housed inside trailers on Air Force bases throughout the southwestern United States. From those trailers, they control the aircraft remotely as they engage in airstrikes and surveillance operations thousands of kilometers away in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. The Holloman Air Force Base in the Chihuahua Desert in New Mexico is a sort of boot camp for remotely piloted aircraft or RPA pilots. Roughly 390 new pilots will be trained at this base to pilot RPAs like the one you see behind me, the Reaper. Now, the number may sound like a lot, but it's actually not enough. With the U.S. military increasingly relying on RPAs for surveillance and airstrikes, the Air Force now faces a pilot shortage. Captain James, whose last name must remain secret for security reasons, is training many of the new recruits. The uh, biggest challenge in being an RPA pilot is maintaining situational awareness. Um, without the tools that a uh, traditionally manned aircraft has. So, for instance, there's no cockpit to look out of. So uh, our big challenge here is teaching the students uh, to use the tools available to us in the ground control station to build and maintain that situational awareness. The Air Force has faced an RPA pilot shortage since at least 2007. It's reportedly had some difficulty in recruiting and retaining them. According to Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Beatty, part of the problem is fatigue. The manpower that we've had has been such that our crews are working six days a week, uh, two days off and continuing on a rotating shift like that through holidays, weekends and everything. And, um, and they do that for three to four years at a time uh, without a break. And so that just kind of wears on you after a while. It can also take an emotional toll. Just because they are thousands of kilometers away from the action, doesn't mean they are disconnected from the mission. A Defense Department study shows that RPA pilots suffer from the same levels of post-traumatic stress syndrome as traditional fighter pilots. These crews will sit on a, uh, a target and see the whole thing develop uh, or follow a convoy through the whole development and you, you get a little bit more attachment, I guess, to the mission that's going on than a crew that just comes over and employs and, and goes home. Um, also, we stick around afterwards to do all the after information collection. Uh, so we see it through its entirety um, and, uh, and that can affect some folks. To deal with the shortage, the Air Force has launched a multi-pronged strategy. It is offering bonuses of $15,000 a year and lowering the number of missions from 65 to 60 per day to ease the workload. Some flight school graduates will also automatically be assigned to RPAs. And the Air Force is working hard to alter the image of RPA pilots. We're not a video game. We're not a drone. Um, we're another platform uh, at the Air Force's disposal to employ air power, and, and we're out there doing great work uh, for our nation. The U.S. Air Force expects to overcome its shortage by 2017. Karina Huber, CCTV, Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.